What's up, everybody? Garrett Sisti here, one half of the Lightning Round podcast, here to give you a little update halfway through the free agency period, a little after lunchtime, so we can give you a little update on what's happened. I was hoping some more stuff would happen for a little bit more exciting podcast, but this is going to be a little quick hitter. Uh, if you guys don't know already, Jamie and I are going on to a new network very soon, uh, probably in the next two weeks or so. And with that, it's going to be a lot more content. Uh, we're looking to add some people to the podcast, uh, maybe some people you recognize. Uh, details for that soon. But also, like you saw last week, Jamie did two podcasts on the restructure for Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and then Cleo McAjoy Bosa. He released one this morning about uh, the details on contract restructures. And now I am here for a little short solo pod to talk about the moves that happened as the opening of the free agency period. So a lot more content from Jamie and I going forward. Look for that. Uh, as we head on to this new network, uh, we, you know, we were, we're still going to give you that long extensive breakdowns like we do after the games and previews and everything else. But I think we'll do a lot more short form content here, uh, wherever you're listening to the podcast and also on YouTube. If you're watching this podcast, we're there on both feeds and uh, just so you know with the move coming up we will hopefully be keeping on the same stream i know we've mentioned that already but obviously we're still in the works of getting our feedback and working out those details as well which we should have details in the next coming days of that so let's talk about it um it's daylight savings time and while you're still wiping the sleep out of your eye tom telesco is working before the free agency period, this legal tampering period opens, they sign a big one, the big fish, if you will, Easton Stick. Uh, they sign Easton Stick, who is going to be the new QB2. Um, don't see the Chargers re-signing Chase Daniel, but uh, it's a one-year deal. Uh, the details of that is it's one year, $1.6 million. There's a $152,000 signing bonus, and it's $1.6 million total with 1 million of it fully guaranteed. So if the chargers decide to go a different direction, maybe draft a quarterback and uh, they wanted to cut Easton stick real low cost, it would cost them a million dollars. So uh, not a, a huge move here. I think we are probably two years removed from this Easton stick experiment, but for whatever the case, uh, the chargers decided to keep Easton stick for another year, kick that can down or stick, if you will, down the road a little bit further and Easton stick will be the QB two. Uh, we talked on the internal podcast, uh, the internal free agents that Easton stick wasn't really a guy we were excited about. Uh, we didn't think they would resign chase Daniel either. You know, our philosophy was listen, if Justin Herbert goes down again, uh, you'd hope that you'd have a veteran backup quarterback that could win you a game or two while Justin Herbert's out. Uh, if Justin Herbert's down for the season, then you, you punt the season really at that point. But, um, you know, you need a guy that can get you a couple wins if he has a minor injury, hopefully. And Easton Stick is not that guy. He's not that guy, pal. Uh, he's just not a guy that's going to win you a couple games. Uh, he can't even get a preseason win. Uh, it's tough for him to get a win against the threes and fours. So I, I just don't see how this really works for the chargers if they got to play him, but um, it's low cost. Uh, this obviously doesn't move the needle a lot. It's a QB two, maybe even a QB three, if they decide to draft one, um, but, and have them compete in camp, but they really like Easton stick. They've kept three quarterbacks for a while now, uh, hoping to develop stick. I haven't seen the development with my own eyes. I'm not there at practice every day, but in every preseason game, it does not seem like he's progressed enough to be, a starting caliber QB three in this league, really. I mean, that's kind of his ceiling at this point, but for what it's worth, they got their backup quarterback. It was a position of need, if you will, uh, not one of their biggest, but they got that done. It was low cost. Um, you know, I had talked about Cooper rush as a, uh, possible QB two, but really a guy who, um, got a lot of wins under his belt. I think he went four and one with the Cowboys when he took over for Dak and, some team might value him and give him close to four or five million. Here you get it for just a million, a little over a million here. And uh, you've got a QB2, at least on the roster. 
maybe they draft a developmental guy in, in uh, day three, but we'll see. But that's the first signing for the Chargers in this free agency period. And uh, just an update for you guys that are part of the Discord. Um, I, I mentioned it uh, earlier. I, I was told that the Chargers were going to sit back on day one. And I'm sure as I'm recording this podcast, they'll make a big move because that's just what they do. But uh, what I was told is they're going to get involved in that second and third wave, which is probably tomorrow and then later on this week where they can kind of pick off some of the guys that didn't get a deal, maybe get some lower end deals. They don't have a lot of money to play with, even with the contract restructure. So don't look for any real big moves. Um, I know there's a rumor about John Johnson, which I had also mentioned in the Discord uh, about a week and a half ago. So if you're not part of that, uh, go join the Discord because we got details on the Austin Eckler uh, fiasco that's going on right now with him potentially asking for a trade now. So uh, go over, join the Discord, you can get some context for that. But um, that you know, uh, there hasn't there's been a rumor about Washington, but there hasn't really been any concrete. Uh, suitors right now for Austin Eckler, and we'll see if the Chargers even want to make that move. So uh won't comment on, th on that. We can probably comment on that a little bit later, but uh, what we can comment on is the restricted free agents. Uh, there's a pair of restricted free agents that did not get tendered today. Uh, that is not a surprise to me or Jamie. Uh, we had mentioned that they weren't worth it. Uh, the Right of, fuse, uh, right of first refusal tender, excuse me, is the lowest tender that the Chargers could uh, give these restricted free agents. Um, there's a first round, second round, and so on. At the very bottom is right to first refusal. And that would guarantee the player $2.4 million. So I don't see any of those guys on the restricted free agent list being worth that. Uh, the guys being uh, Donald Parham, who did not get tendered today. Uh, Braden Fajoko, who didn't get tendered today. Jalen Guyton, Storm Norton, Joe Gaziano, and Derek Tezuka, Taziki, whatever uh, the edge they signed, however you pronounce his name, uh, towards the end, uh, end of last season. So of that list, I don't see a guy that's worth an annual average of $2.4 million. Just to, These are all depth guys, and uh, not surprised that Fajoko didn't get tendered, not surprised that Parham didn't get tendered either. So they're obviously going to go out and test the market. So with Parham, you know, um, he's been injury prone. He had a really scary uh, concussion two years ago. Last year, he just could not get healthy at all since the start of training camp. The guy just couldn't be healthy, and when he did, he just he just was unreliable depth, to be honest with you. So, you know, the Chargers already have uh, Gerald Everett. They've already got Trey McKitty, and you got to assume that they're going to be drafting a tight end, if not picking one up uh, in free agency, um, to add to that depth chart. Uh, so, and then also stone smart, uh, don't forget about stone smart. Who's a the guy they liked and got some playing time late in the year. So you got Everett McKitty smart on the roster right now. That's kind of rounding out your tight end three, there group. And then hopefully in my mind, they draft a tight end probably in day two and, uh, they can get a starting developmental tight end there and hopefully can be a starter uh, going forward over Gerald Everett. And so, while the the height is nice, the frame is nice, Donald Parham just has not been reliable. And uh, you just cannot count on him. Uh, he's a freak athlete, and you love the size. Uh, it looks like they made him in a lab, but you know, with that body comes the restrictions of staying healthy. And Parham is just one of those guys who just could not stay healthy. So um, as a guy who's had this injury history, uh, you can't pay him almost $2.5 million. So it makes a ton of sense that, that they didn't do it. Uh, very possible that they can re-sign him as depth going into camp. So not all lost here in the Donald Parham or Braden Fajoko front, but uh, it's it's a smart move by the Chargers here to not tender either of them. Uh, 2.4 at the very least. It's just too high for those guys. And then in terms of Fajoko, I mean, he was really good uh, at the end of the year. Uh, got some playing time, was a... Uh, Really good run defender when you saw Austin Johnson go down. You saw the rookie Tito go down. Uh, he came in and really held his own and uh, proved that he can be a rotational defensive tackle in the NFL. But with that, uh, not worth $2.4 million. Again, I don't want to be a broken record here, but uh, it's the right move because these guys aren't, aren't worth that tag. And uh, another guy who's going to test the market, um, I think there's a chance he could come back to the Chargers. That's always a possibility. 
Uh, and if he does come back to the Chargers, uh, take his Twitter login away because he has just been a absolute nuisance on my timeline. And I am all for him coming back as a depth player. But as a guy on my timeline, I'm ready to unfollow uh, once he resigns with another team. So, so that's kind of the news so far. Austin Eckler obviously being a, a big kind of cloud hanging over the Chargers right now and whether the Chargers will grant him permission to go seek a trade uh, and whether the Chargers even have a choice there. If Austin Eckler holds out, we'll get more details soon. And then Jamie and I can comment on then. But early on, it's a QB2. Uh, Easton stick, not something they need to go out and pursue right away. Uh, they can wait on it in the draft now that they got a, at least a body there at QB two and Parham and Fahoko guys that did not get the tender. Uh, not a big surprise if you listen to the show. And then uh, the rumors about John Johnson is exciting and uh, we'll see once more moves have been made. I'll be back on here or Jamie will be back on here to talk about it. But other than that, that's all I got. I was hoping I'd have more exciting things to talk about, um, but that's what we got so far here, and I just wanted to pop on and uh, give you my thoughts real quick on the Easton Stick resigning and then not tendering Braden Falco or Donald Parham. I uh, appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.